You're listening to Clearview Today with Dr. Abadan Shah, the daily show that engages mind and heart for the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm Ryan Hill. I'm John Galantis. You can find us online at clearviewtodayshow.com. Or if you have any questions for Dr. Shaw or suggestions for new topics, send us a text to 252-582-5028, or you can email us at contact at clearviewtodayshow.com. That's right. You guys can help us keep the conversation moving forward by supporting the show. You can share it online with your friends and family. Leave us a good five-star review on iTunes or Spotify, anywhere you get your podcasting content from. We're going to leave a couple of links right there in the description, so you can do just that. Absolutely nothing less than five stars. That's what I. That's just what I look forward to, man. It's it's like, just, it makes you happy. It's just like perfecting. It's like getting all the achievements in a video game, man. You just get you see those right. five stars, and you're like, I did it. Right, right. I can finally, I, I can finally rest. Speaking of video games, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I have a, I have a, a, a question for you. Yeah, yeah. I know that you are like me. You are, you are a video game guy. Yes, you enjoy playing video games. Love it. Uh, not a lot of time. Wish after I had. Kids. Yeah, I was going. I was just about to say, wish I had time to actually yeah. play. But not a lot of time after kids. No. Um, what is your go-to? Like, let's say you had a busy day, mm-hmm. stressful day, lots of things Ooh. here, there, everywhere. Right. I feel like you haven't had a chance to catch your breath. You go home, you're like, man, I don't have any responsibilities for a little bit. Mm-hmm. I just want to kind of unwind with a, with a little video game action. So, What are you playing? So it depends on, uh, like now, like to, uh, today? I was gonna say, it depends on the season in my life that you ask me. Give, give me both. Uh, a few years ago, it would have been like probably Mass Effect. Like probably something... something um, Goal related, goal oriented, side quest oriented, okay. something where I'm like, I got to get this done. I just got to get this done. Now <laughs> that stuff here at the church has picked up, the new building is getting uh, close to completion. I've got kids. I don't want to be checking off any more checklists. Yeah. I just want to. So probably it would be right now I'm playing Mario versus Donkey Kong, <laughs> which nice. is like a little puzzle game. But Gavin really loves it. And I'm just going more and more back to the Nintendo game. Yeah, because there, there are no achievements. Yeah, there are no checklists of things that you got to get done. You just jump the mushroom. And it's fun. Yeah. <laughs> and that's that's about it. So I am I'm kind of the opposite uh-huh. of that. And I and I clocked this about myself. Uh, I within the past few weeks or so, I was like, man, I really want to just kind of like relax, unwind for a little bit. I got a little bit a little bit of time before, you know, it's time to go ahead and head toward bed. Uh, I want to play I want to play a game. Mm-hmm. But I can have like the busiest, most hectic day. Uh, just making phone calls and make sure this gets done and doing this and doing that. And I get home and the game that I go for Mm -hmm. is like super in-depth RPG side quests. Like make sure you get this done, this goal, this, you got to get exactly right here. That's something you play when you're bored. I have no clue. I don't know why, but for some reason, like when I clock out and Uh want to kind of like, you know, just do a mindless activity for a little bit. It's the most complex, that's, convoluted video. That is game. weird to me because that's something like on a bored day, on a boring day when you got nothing to do, no. that's the perfect game because no. it's like I've got stuff to do. I'm busy. I've got to go over here to the Citadel and I've got to talk to this ambassador uh, about finding this missing data right. chip. But I can't do it because I don't have the I don't have the VIP key right. to get into the Citadel. So I got to take it to this planet mm-hmm. and meet up with this people, have that conversation, choose the right dialogue choose the, options, right, right. get that VIP key, go back here, and now I've got a random encounter with these aliens. I have to fight, but I can't fight them out. because I don't have the right armor upgrade. Right. So but I got to go back that, to the Citadel. Go back to the Citadel. Yep, now yep. that unlocks another side quest yes, that yes. I have to go craft this armor. Yeah, that's my jam. I don't know. I don't but know. Why. Not on a, but not after a real busy no, day. On a yeah. real busy day, I just want to jump turtles no, <laughs> and not for, think. For me, that's like that's like the unplug activity. Is, Jeez, Crash it's, Bandicoot it's is real good for that com- too. Crash Bandicoot, where is you good just for that. you just don't think you just like jump linear. Yeah, jump yeah love that. I don't know. I don't know why. I don't know if it's because my brain has been in like. In in gear or like on like on go, that's the relaxation. I don't know. I to don't know me, what it is, but I, I I thought about that the other day. I was like, <laughs> why am I doing this to myself? To, to me, it, those games I like those games on slow days because it feels like work, and and that's the reason I don't like them after busy days is because a lot of games these days feel like work. Which yep. if you're bored and you have no life and you have no, you're not doing anything, is you, you can turn that game off and be like, I got a lot accomplished today. I don't know. For How are y'all enjoying your stinking galaxy? I, yeah, I saved it. You're <laughs> welcome for that. I guess for me, it's just like the I just enjoy the story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like just to be able to kind of sit with that story, even if I'm actively participating in the story, just be able to sit with that story. That's the that's the relaxation activity for me. I, I guess so. I We're there are different types of gamers out there, people. Y'all didn't know that. Y'all yeah. thought it was all just mashing buttons and yeah. 
and uh, flash and lights. But man, it's 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 there's some psychology behind it. Yeah, maybe we could talk about that another time. Video gamers, write in and let us know what is your go to after a uh, after a stressful day. You want to unwind, got a little bit of time for video games. Uh, write in and let us know what you'd be playing. Two five two. Especially if you got kids, because yeah. I want to know where you're finding that time. Two five two five eight two five zero two eight, or you can visit us online at clearviewtodayshow.com. We'll be back after this. What's going on, listeners? My name is John. And I'm David. And we hope you are enjoying the podcast thus far. You know, we really appreciate how many of you download the podcast every day. Right. But we also want to remind you that we are first and foremost a radio show. Clearview Today is actually syndicated through the Truth Network. And we just want to let you know right now that in addition to hosting the all-time best Christian talk show of all time. Hashtag Clearview Today. Hashtag Clearview Today. The Truth Network also, as it turns out, has an extensive library of Christian programming. We really love everything they're doing at the Truth Network because the whole goal is to encourage challenge, confront, and uplift listeners with the life-changing truth of Jesus Christ through Christian Talk Radio. And listen, we know we are not the only show wanting to expand its audience. So if you have a vision for your show or for your ministry, why don't you consider syndicating your show through the Truth Network? Because they rely on decades of experience of self-syndication with a full array of features for your long-form or short-form content. Make sure you visit the Truth Network online today at Truth network.com or you can give them a call at 336-759-0363 again that's 336-759-0363 well john are you ready (laughs) i was born ready my friend let's hop right back in all right Welcome back to Clearview Today with Dr. Abadan Shah, the daily show that engages mind and heart for the gospel of Jesus Christ. You can visit us online at clearviewtodayshow.com, or if you have any questions or suggestions for new topics, send us a text to 252-582-5028. That's right, and we're here once again in the Clearview Today studio with Dr. Abadan Shah, who is a PhD in New Testament textual criticism, professor at Carolina University, author, full-time pastor, the host of today's show. He's got over 300,000 gamer score on Xbox Marketplace. Unbelievable. Dr. Shah, how have you been getting these achievements, my friend? (laughs) I'm seeing achievements pop up on my phone left and right. What was (laughs) what was the last game that you really like got into that you were really 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 passionate about Uh, last game i really enjoyed playing Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so i enjoyed metal gear solid man after my own heart yeah Yeah, i enjoyed that. that but i would say mario kart okay on 64, I think. Yeah, mm-hmm. Mario Kart 64 Classic. is a great one. See, Classic. Metal yeah. Gear Solid, see, this is what we were talking about. Metal Gear Solid was back in that day where there wasn't all these achievements. It was a linear story. It didn't yeah. have all these side quests. It was fun. That was a fun game. Right. And games just ain't fun nowadays. Everything has shifted to an open world concept, which is great. I love it. I mean, you kind of go wherever you want to, make your own path, make your own way. It's kind of, But it also can be very overwhelming. Well, it's kind of funny because right before we started, I was talking about it. I was like, yeah, so we're going to talk about this. This is what we talked about in the intro. And Nicholas was like, you didn't play Red Dead 2? I was like, that's exactly what I'm talking about. That is one of the most open, <laughs> meandering, side questy yeah. games out there. That is what, not. What do, you, what do I do next? Whatever you want. Now, now that's what I said. If on a boring rainy day when you got nothing going on, well, yeah, those are those are fun games. But who does that anymore? Yeah. But I've watched Nic- Nicholas play Red Dead. Uh huh. It's crazy watching the terrain i'm like <laughs> i wish i could just snap my finger like this you're somewhere and be in the and game just be yeah there. it looks unbelievable, unbelievable. Now, it is true unbelievable. it's immersive it's immersive it those rockstar games for those uh, who don't know this is not like some weird <laughs> crazy game it's it's the west yeah oh right. yeah it's, it's cowboys old, yeah. yeah yeah it's it's a cowboys i didn't play the first one your son-in-law jared gave me the first one to borrow and he was like he was like just just play it and to me because i know you're gonna love it i kept it for a year <laughs> i never got around <laughs> to playing it so he asked me he was like do you he was like i've been looking for my copy of red dead and i can't find it. i was like jerry you gave me that a year ago he was like oh i forgot about that he's like how did you like it and i was like uh actually i never played it he said give oh, me my no. stuff back <laughs> i was like no 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 i'll go home and play he's like go nah, home give me my had stuff a year. back <laughs> you had, you had a year. your time i never <laughs> you forfeited your chance. i never once opened it to play it <laughs> 
The verse of the day today is coming to us from Luke chapter 10, verse 2. Then he said to them, The harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Mm, Dr. Shaw, I know that's, that's uh, a prayer that is on your heart all the time is just give, give us, bring us the people to, to make this yeah. harvest actually happen. And he has. Mm-hmm. God has sent so many people. Uh, and this was a prayer that we prayed, I would say, at least 20 years ago. Mm. God, send more hands. Uh, I, I there, there are certain gifts I have. I can talk to people about Christ, but it's not. I'm not always comfortable because I am. Sometimes I'm outside my comfort zone. People who I don't know, I don't interact with on a regular basis. Uh, very little we have in common. So I, I need people who can meet people where they are. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And like a mechanic, I can talk to them. I can talk to them. But then after a certain point, it's like. What else can I say about, <laughs> right, that, right. Yeah, about something I do not know about yeah. under the hood? Um, or sports. When we first came to North Carolina, it was like basketball country. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. That's true. In Georgia, it was um, football mm-hmm. or race cars. Mm-hmm. I knew about race cars because I worked with a guy <laughs> and uh, or friends with uh, some. So I knew about race cars. Uh, football, mm, not as much because we were in Tacoa, not many football teams. Yeah. And then... Come here, everybody's basketball. Mm-hmm. Yeah, What's some your team. What's your team? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. And you, oh, and you better pick the right team too. Yeah, it, yeah. You don't really have that over over football. Like they definitely have. Uh, they definitely have like you know. I like my team and I like my but but basketball is where it's yeah. really. Mm. So I didn't have much in common. So I said, God, send people who can actually communicate with people, whether it's sports or occupation or uh, or military. I don't mm-hmm. have military experience. How do I communicate with them? Right. Yeah. So I prayed for that. God, send more people. And now, if you look across our congregation on any typical morning, mm-hmm. you will, or, or evening for that matter, you will see people from all walks of life. Yes. That's right. We yeah. have nurses, we have uh, EMTs, mm-hmm. we have police officers, we have business people, we have engineers, we have sales, we have teachers, uh, we have government workers, mm-hmm. city officials. I mean, it's like... That's what we prayed for. Yeah, man. It really is beautiful to see, you know, such a diverse collection of people yep. and all here gathered, united, and, and uh, focused on the same thing. That's right. It's exciting. That's I, right. I love it. I love it. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the Clear View Current, where we cut through the chaos of today's headlines with a clear Christian perspective. We're here to keep you up to date on what's going on in the world, big or small. You know, Dr. Shaw, there's a Texas pastor who was known for fiery preaching, and he was he appeared a lot alongside John MacArthur, but he's been removed from ministry after an alleged inappropriate relationship with an un- unidentified woman. Of course, this is we're talking about Steve Lawson. Yeah. You know, that news broke a little bit last week, and people have been falling out over it. People, uh, I know there's a lot of people in uh, Trinity Bible Church, the elders are stressing discipline after his removal and all this stuff. And we've talked about this stuff a lot on the show, and we wanted to kind of take a different approach from it uh, for it today because we wanted to talk about you know what well, we typically will talk about you know why does this keep happening how is this getting more and more rampant and we can only have that conversation so many times you know what I mean yeah. but there's other conversations and I, I think Ryan you you brought up a great point is like what do we learn from this yeah like what other than just saying this should never have happened this was wrong this is sad like what do we actually learn from this. Well, it feels like it gets to a point where it's like okay here's another one okay yeah. here's another one okay here's another one and you know we can we can keep the same old rhetoric like that shouldn't have happened. And that's true. But how do we move forward? What do, what do we as believers, how do we process this? Especially I'm thinking about those who are growing up in a culture that is very uh, antagonistic mm-hmm, towards mm-hmm. Christianity. I mean, this is going to be another sort of uh, you know weapon used against us. Like, look, another one has fallen, a bunch of hypocrites. Right. Mm-hmm. Talking about um, what can we learn I think we have to go back to the drawing board Mm -hmm. and ask ourselves the question, are we implementing certain systems or ideas or principles and then stamping them with, because it's in the Bible, Mm. and thinking that that system, principle, idea, concept, whatever it is, is actually biblical and it should work, and then it's not working and then we're, we're sort of like at a loss. Now, I don't know if people are confused. Like, where, where are you going with this? The big word, the big word is accountability. Mm-hmm, right? mm-hmm. 
And it seems like everything that people say is when, the, you know, you have to appoint elders in your church. Because when you've got elders in your church, then you've got a group of people around you, a group of men, godly men there to keep you accountable. And it seems to me like every single Bull. one of the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> every single right. one of these stories that comes out, every single one, there's a response from one of the elders. I mean, there's, there's elders there's there. Such, there. Yeah, my question yeah, is, like, what is were you doing? What, what happened? So when, at what point did the elders start becoming accountable? Yeah. Right. Well, the problem is, what if this whole idea of accountability of this elder rule itself is flawed? Mm. <laughs> what, what if, what if you're, you're looking to the wrong place to find integrity? Right. What you're saying is, at the heart of this whole idea that i got to have a group of people around me to hold me accountable, mm -hmm. it's like, as long as y'all are watching over me, I'm not going to mess up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But if y'all ain't there, I might. I might. I might. It seems like, I mean, <laughs> I'm going back to elementary school and the scientific method, testing a hypothesis. If you no, have no, a I hypothesis didn't even think about that. Dr. in Shelley. place and you test it and it is proven to not be effective, yeah. then you go back and you change the original premise. Like the original premise was faulty. Yeah. Very interestingly, a lot of these who are coming out right now with messing up and losing their 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 moral integrity are coming from elder rule churches. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. What is happening there? Right. I would say I would say almost every single one. Right. I mean, I can't almost. think of. Not a, there, there are some who are not. Okay. But I don't know what what they're coming from. Yeah. I, I was going to say I can't think of any that have come out that haven't been from elder rule. And yet yeah. this is always the this is the um what you call it the template that people espouse. Mm -hmm. Right. But it if seems you had this this wouldn't happen. But right. it seems to be at a certain point we have to say like okay it's clearly not the key to success here because it's not working it's not yeah. working it's and what if it's not in the bible mm. right i know right now a lot of y'all just like the, the, they the, perked the, up the, <laughs> they perked up they you know they spewed out the coffee in their mouth <laughs> <laughs> all like, over the windshield <laughs> <laughs> like what <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean <laughs> show me some verses on accountability mm. that are often used to say this is why you need it so I decided to do a Google search. I, I did one over here, mm -hmm. and I did one on my iPad. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they, unfortunately, they sync, so I, I kind of had to say, no, stop syncing. <laughs> I pulled up two different um, uh, sites. Right. Scriptures on accountability, and the other one is verses on accountability. Mm -hmm. Just Google search. Mm -hmm. Nothing special. No book on accountability. Just, just these searches. So I came up with a few verses. First one here is Romans chapter 14, verse 12. If y'all can be like... Uh, quick to open them. Yeah, you get that. You get that. Let's one, right? read them. So first one is Romans and and John. If you want to find James five sixteen, got it. Fourteen twelve. Yes, Romans fourteen twelve. So then each of us shall give account of himself to God. Oh, <laughs> not not to, not to the counts of elders. Yeah. Okay. Uh, James five sixteen. Confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Is that about accountability or about prayer? Yes, yeah, prayer. Okay. The effective uh, fervent prayer. All right. James four seventeen. Ryan. I got that. Um, John First Thessalonians five eleven. First. Okay. Got it. James four seventeen. Therefore, to him who knows to do good and does not do it, to him it is sin. <laughs> All right, what's the next one? First Thessalonians five eleven. Uh, therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, just as in fact you are doing. Is that accountability or is it like encouragement? That would be encouragement. It's got encouragement. All right. Next one is Second um, uh, Corinthians five ten. Okay. Uh, John Matthew twelve thirty six. Second Corinthians five ten. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in his body. In okay. the body, according to what he has done, whether good or bad. Matthew 12, uh, 36. But I tell you that everyone will have to give account on the day of judgment for every empty word that they have spoken. All right. Proverbs twenty seven seventeen. Ryan and uh, John, Matthew 18, 15 through 17. 15 through 17. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. 17. As iron sharpens iron, so a man sharpens the countenance of his friend. Is that really about accountability or like, hey, I'm going to help you be the best you can be? Right. right. It's building yeah. him up and encouraging him. Right. Not okay. All right. How about Matthew 18, 15 through 17? If your brother or sister sins, go and point out their fault just between the two of you. If they listen to you, you have won them over. But if they will not listen, take one or two others along so that every matter may be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. If they still refuse to listen, tell it to the church. And if they refuse to listen even to the church, treat them as you would a pagan or a tax collector. Now here's a question. Is that really about accountability in ministry or is it really about 
somebody in the body of Christ sins against you. Mm-hmm. Right. Right? I can go on and on, and um, let me go a little further in because it may seem like, oh, you're just picking accountability, accountability verses. Uh, uh, let me go further in. Let's go to Hebrews 4.13, John, and uh, Ryan, if you would take uh, Proverbs 28.13. Hebrews 4.13 says, Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we must give account. Proverbs 28, 13. He who covers his sins will not prosper, but whoever confesses and forsakes them will have mercy. All right. James uh, 5. Let's go back to James for a quick second, John. Mm -hmm. Verses 19 through 20. And then, Ryan, if you would take Galatians 6, 1 and 2. Says, my brothers and sisters, if one of you should wander from the truth and someone should bring that person back, remember this. Whoever turns a sinner from the error of their way, they will save them from death and cover over a multitude of sins. Yeah, I will hate to say that to you guys. If you think that's the verse, the person's already gone off the edge. Mm -hmm. This is to bring them back Mm -hmm. so there won't be more sin and more condemnation. So it's not really accountable. It didn't work out at that point. Right. All right. Galatians 6, 1 and 2. Brethren, if a man is overtaken in any trespass, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. Bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. Right. I mean, this is not about a group of people keeping each other accountable. So the question comes back to, how do we do that then? Mm -hmm. Because we think this system is going to hold it. The system comes from a lack of trust in leadership, Mm -hmm. which is coming from a response or a reaction against Catholicism. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good point. Right? Mm -hmm. This is against Roman Catholicism. Uh, The response that how can this one man sit up there and be called a pope, which means papa, Mm -hmm. (laughs) and and tell us how to do things, and and he has these cardinals under him and blah, blah, blah. We're going to make sure we don't go to that system. Mm -hmm. Hence, we're going to have plurality of leadership. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, do it. Well, that's the way it was supposed to be. Well, when you go to any of these churches that have this plurality of elders and plurality of leaders, it's always that one who is the shining star. Yeah. So what is really happening there? Mm-hmm. And, and, and is that even true when they said that's the way it was supposed to be? No, it's not true. I was going to say, like, like, they always point back to the early church and to the Bible, but there was never any, I mean, I don't see any mention of, I see mention of, like, pastors and leaders of that church. Right. But I never see, like, hey, this group of guys held each other accountable and, and held <laughs> helped each other when they yeah. messed up. They always mention the church and the leader of that church. Right. I think it's, it's and I mean, again, I'm not asking for a dictatorial rule or whatever. What I'm saying here is if you want to get back to the heart of accountability is if that person does not fear God and mm-hmm. the judgment to come one day and the consequences of your sin on your family, on your church body, on your staff, on the testimony before the lost world, no amount of five guys sitting across yeah, from true. you and right. saying, what did you watch this week? So how Absolutely. was this week? Yeah. Is going to do that. That's true. That's true. Hundred percent. There's a there's a great book we read, and I I, I think it's Jim Collins. I think it's um what is that? Oh, man, creative followership. I think, but he talks about that. You got to pick your boss. You got to pick yeah. your leader. Mm-hmm. And if you if you feel like, hey, I really love this church, but the pastor or the leader of this church is not a man of integrity, like you said, there's no way that I'm going to or a group of guys is going to make that person be a man of integrity. No. They can they I can't get to the truth of that man's heart. Yeah. They, they may be talented, but that does not mean they're a person of integrity. Right. Yeah. Right. If I'm not if I'm not conscientious enough that the God of the universe is <laughs> disapproving of my actions, I'm I'm gonna lie to a, a team of people guys. sitting yeah, there. They're, they're already, just guys who already look at me like uh, or look at that person as if like you are the reason for all our success. So we're going to just make sure we are the hedge of protection. You really need a hedge of protection around right. you. Right. Right. Yeah. And that's a good example of how traditions have become become sacred for some mm-hmm. people. Right. I mean, it's elevated to the place of Scripture, when in reality, that's never outlined in the Bible. It's like we're expecting uh, to implement what a parent should do with their child mm-hmm. with a grown man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> True. <laughs> like a mom and dad are to watch over little Gavin or yeah. little Holden to make sure they don't do anything dumb, yeah. or run out the road and in, uh, out the door into the street. All right. Well, that's what a parent is supposed to do. You're right. expecting to parent one of the elders? Or, yeah, or the pastor the of your church? Elder? Yeah. 
Well, it's a sad testimony. Yeah. I mean, even then, that's what that's the word they use. It's funny that you say that because the the headline is Trinity Bible Church Elder Stress Discipline. They're going to discipline <laughs> yeah. this guy. <laughs> They're going to give this guy a whooping. Yep. I mean, look, I know that's not what it's saying, and I get this is a yeah. this is a serious thing that this it church is, a very is going sad through. Thing. But at the same time, it does kind of point out the flaw. Like even the terminology, the nomenclature is the same. It's we're having to babysit and parent right. our pastor. And if that's the model, if we have to, if he requires that much supervision, do you really want him as your leader? Do you really want to be set up in a church that you got to constantly watch over and hover over and babysit and scrutinize every move? Oh, we trust the guy. It's the Satan. So you're you're going to stand against Satan for this guy, right? Yeah, good point. My, my my suggestion is yes, we need to be together because Satan is has more trepidation when we are. In fellowship, rather than we're isolated, mm-hmm. okay, that's that's given to all of us, right, to live in the body of Christ, and and there are scriptures for that. But to think that a leader can be sort of kept in line mm-hmm. by other group of people, that person will find a way to say. Right. So, so I'm I'm reading this I'm reading this. Uh, article now and this is actually coming from one of the elders this is a direct quote from him i'm not making this up just like parents discipline their children out of love and concern for their well-being the lord disciplines his children because he loves them and wants what's best for them so what what do i got elders for yeah no you you're you're all all you're all undermining your own position yeah. what what is the is the lord going to discipline through you through this man is that what elders are there for? Well, I mean, I'm asking because we don't yeah. we don't do this at Clearview yeah. Church. We don't have this set up. You know, yeah. we don't have it where there's an elder rule. There's the pastor. There's this pastoral staff, and then there's the congregation. Yeah. There is accountability, right? But but in three areas. Number one is financial. Mm-hmm. Uh, second is uh, sexual or mm-hmm. marital, and the third is doctrinal. Mm-hmm. Financial accountability, we don't handle the money. Right. We, we have a finance team. We have a CPA. All that happens there. That's accountability. Right. Mm-hmm. All right. Secondly, sexual accountability. How in the world can any of them hold anybody accountable when you are not in front of them all day? You can. Right. The only person who can hold that person accountable is his own wife. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If he's lying to her, if he's doing all these things behind her back, I mean, that's a bigger problem there. Yeah. And if he's lying to his wife, don't you think he's going to lie to a group of elders, a group of guys sitting across from him? 100%. Great point. That's a, give him a, a plug. Oh, yeah, let me get that. that. I'm, I'm a little slow Thank with my sound effects today. That. Hey, there you go, around here. I'll give you that, too. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, he's going to lie to y'all, man. He's going to lie Absolutely to y'all. Man. He will. He's gonna lie to y'all. Yeah. And then doctrinal accountability. Where does that go? So we're going to have a bunch of... It was so funny at my ordination. Again, I'm tr- not trying to brag here. It was quite funny. I had brought in a couple of pastors, uh, one seminary student, and then our deacons. And I was doing PhD work at the time. Mm -hmm. And so (laughs) I sat down across from them, and um, and I'm ready. I had read up a few things. I was like, how much can I read? I don't think they're going to go that deep with me on, like, give, give us the history of the penal substitutionary atonement of Christ. Yeah. I said, I don't think they're going to do something like that. I think this is going to be more, what do you believe about the Bible? Mm-hmm. Or what do you believe about visitation and things like that? So I sat across from them, and I remember very distinctly um, the person who was leading the, the, the whole ordination, you know, the council. He was a pastor, a f- friend of mine. And I asked him, I said, can you please lead, you know, get it going? He said, oh, yeah, I'll be glad to. So he's like, all right, man, um, uh, you know Brother Abaddon, and we're, we're, we're really excited that he's going to be ordained, and it's, uh, it's, it's great, it's wonderful. Um, well, let's, let's go and begin. And he prayed, and he said, all right, y'all go ahead, and any questions come to your mind, this is the chance. And I remember our deacons and <laughs> the seminary friends, they're like, I mean, what are we going to ask him? He knows right. more than we do on right. this subject. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so it was like, oh. That, that didn't help. So I was so ready to answer. And then my friend actually ended up asking me most questions. He's like, let me just ask you some questions. I already know where you stand, but I'm going to ask you these questions. Yeah. Right. So it, it, it's, I know people can be intimidated when it comes to doctrine. How are you going to appoint somebody to, be, to hold you doctrinally accountable? Now, unless you're living close to a seminary where you have seminary professors in your church— uh, or you're living clo- in a big city where you have people who are, you know, really have ministries or whatever, they can ask you questions on doctrine. Mm-hmm. 
But the average person is not going to be able to do that. That's right. But they can tell when you're preaching the truth. Mm -hmm. They can tell when you're mincing words. So doctrinal accountability to me is the church body. Yeah, yeah. that's a good point. If How do you know that you have gone off the deep end? They'll stop coming. Yeah, mm. <laughs> good point. You will see the discontent. You yeah. will see... Uh, you will see life go out of them. Mm-hmm. You will see people going, I don't know. I don't get this. I don't. I, this is something new and weird. Maybe I need to check out another church. Yeah. And that's at, the, at that point, the church has to decide, should we keep this guy or does he need to go? And I think, I think as well, you can tell, that's a great, great point. I think as well, you can tell when you have people who are staying for years and years, who are, mm-hmm. who are uh, not only coming in, because I mean, you've got people who have these huge mega churches, but I bet you there's a, there's a constant rotation of people who are coming for the first time, seeing that it's not the truth and over the course of a few months yeah. leave. But then when you've got a church like this, where people have been here for 20, 30 years and they know they're raising their families, they're having kids here, they know that it's the truth and God's yeah. blessing it because mm-hmm. of that. Right. Yeah. So those those three levels of accountability, uh, financial, sexual, and doctrinal. Mm-hmm. That's it. Mm-hmm. Financial, make sure we we have a separate entity that handles money, uh, a CPA that that handles handles the audits. Sexual, that has to be with that person and his wife, right? I mean, that yes. has to be. Or even the staff, I would say, in a sense, are like we're, we're keeping an eye on each other. Hundred mm-hmm. percent. Um, and then doctrinal, that's the congregation. Mm-hmm. And, and we have the statement of faith. You can read it any time and see if the preaching is deviating from there to go, wait, right. I think now we're preaching um, sinless perfection. Mm-hmm. Or, or I think we're te- teaching annihilationism. Mm-hmm. Or I think we're teaching some preterist doctrine. I mean, you know, you can tell something is not right. Or we're teaching universalism. Right. Or we're teaching, uh, uh, you know, we're, we're ta- talking a lot about... Um, inspiration but not about inerrancy Mm -hmm. what's happening here yeah that's true any any one person can go to our website at any point and see all of those statements it's not hidden see if it's lining up that's right right. i would say that that's the heart of it and in this situation with steve lawson and others i think the sexual accountability is where it's happening Mm -hmm. and the system itself is is flawed Mm-hmm. It, we need to go back to, does that man really understand the holiness of God? Does he really understand the judgment that is coming? Right. Yeah. Does he understand the accountability that he has, in a sense, to his congregation, to his wife, his kids? Like, I did this to you. Mm-hmm. I just completely demoralized you. Mm-hmm. I, I may cause some of you to question your faith for the rest of your life. I may cause some of you to no longer desire to be saved. I'm going to be a, a you know a stumbling block for the lost person to come to Christ and how terrible that is. Mm-hmm. If, he, if, if he doesn't feel that, yeah, then, then no, can, no amount of elders is going to change. put a thousand that. people around him 24-7. He'll yeah. still find a way. 100%. That's right. So important for us in clarifying terms and talking about how accountability works, how it doesn't work, and how it's applied to church leadership. If you enjoyed today's episode, write in and let us know, 252-582-5028, or you can visit us online at clearviewtodayshow.com. Don't forget you can partner with us financially on that same website. Scroll to the bottom, click that donate button, and let us know it's coming from our Clearview Today Show family. Lots of great content coming your way the rest of this week. Make sure you guys tune in. We love you guys. We'll see you tomorrow on Clearview Today.